when you need to grow plants to feed your family, what should you grow? I'm not talking about gardening for fun or gardening because you like to experiment with plants. I'm talking about growing plants for survival. Join me today as I discuss my top 12 crops to grow in a survival garden. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and there are many reasons why you might be considering a survival garden. Disease, war, supply chain issues, there are a number of events in the world today that makes growing your own food a better idea every day. But when it comes to growing your own food, there are some important considerations. You may need to change the way that you're currently gardening. You may need to learn new ways of gardening. So as I've compiled this list, I've looked at four primary factors in determining what the best crops are to grow. The first being nutrition and calorie count. If you're going to take the space in your garden to grow some of these important crops, well, they should have a benefit to your diet. They should be nutritional and they should supply much of the calorie count that you need on any given day. They should also be plants that are easy to grow. It really doesn't make sense to grow a crop that's going to be so challenging for you that it might lead to failure. We're talking about survival. We're talking about your food. So you need to grow plants that are going to make it through to the end of your growing season. And for all of those plants you harvest, well, you need to think about the storage ability of the plant, how you can preserve those crops so that they last longer than the growing season. And I think it's important to grow plants that you're probably already familiar with. Rather than trying to grow some new exotic plant that you hear is great and packed with nutrients, grow some of the plants that you've probably already grown and maybe already eating in your diet. The order of these 12 crops is not necessarily their order of importance. Instead, I'm listing these plants based on the time of year that you can grow them in your garden. Because on a cold, snowy, wintry day like I have right now, I'm beginning to think about the plants and what my plan is for each of these beds. The ones that I can get in first when it's still cold are ideal to start growing in a survival garden. The first being beets. Beets can germinate when the temperatures are still below freezing at night. When they grow, they don't mind a little bit of snow. They're packed with nutrients, with vitamins, and with those calories. They're extremely easy to grow for most of us, and especially as you're thinking about those early plants in your spring garden, consider growing the beets. This is a staple of many Eastern European countries. So history has already shown that beets can be a substantial part of your diet. Beets can be stored for a number of months, and there are also different ways you can preserve them. I like fermented beets, so much so that I made a video about how to ferment beets. If you leave them in the ground, they'll survive through the winter. As a biennial, in their second season, they'll send out their seeds, which is a great idea in a survival garden. Go ahead and leave some of them in the ground, as I have in this bed. You can still harvest them in the spring, though the texture will be a little bit different. But if you allow them to grow, you'll have more seeds to continue growing beets year after year. The second crop on the list is turnips. And turnips have a lot of similarities to beets. They're both root crops that are rich in nutrients, easy to grow, and you can start them very early in the season. Another benefit to both of these plants so far is that you can also grow them in an autumn garden. Grow them in the spring, harvest, then put in your summer crops, and then grow these again in the autumn to fill out your season. 
turnips will store extremely well. In fact, I still have some turnips in the refrigerator from my harvest of this bed last year. They're not a typical part of most diets, but I think turnips actually taste pretty well. I like roasted turnips along with roasted beets as a nice way to add that nutrition and that calorie count to my diet. Number three and number four on the list are kale and spinach. And I know they're both leafy greens and often they look quite similar, but they are completely different plants and both should be grown in a survival garden. Kale is a wonderful plant that will grow pretty much through most of the season. Give it a little bit of shade in the summer and you'll still be able to harvest the leaves. And that's the way to do it. Just pull off the leaves and allow the plant to continue to grow. And a kale plant might get four or five feet tall with you harvesting throughout the season. Spinach grows pretty quickly, which is one of the reasons it makes such sense in a survival garden. It can be grown while there's still snow on the ground. I've had spinach actually last through the winter in the ground in an area that was protected with hoops and plastic. The spinach, you can harvest individual leaves or just harvest the whole plant and put new seeds in to continue growing in a particular bed. Spinach does pretty well if you start the plants indoors. So you can have a steady supply of transplants as you harvest the spinach at the size that you like best. Cabbage is another cool season plant that does well in most gardens and you can grow it in spring and fall. Depending on the variety, if you want a nice big head of cabbage, it can take a long time to grow. So you might consider some of the other varieties that don't take as long so that you can continue harvesting crops in your garden. One of the very first videos I did was how to make sauerkraut, which is an ideal way to preserve your cabbage. It has a number of vitamins, it has the nutrition you need, and as you probably know, it's actually a staple in many diets around the world. The next crop you're probably already growing on a regular basis, but maybe you should think about growing more, and that's peas. And I'll also include lentils in this category because lentils are a legume in the pea family. The nice thing about peas is they can get growing early in the season. And you can actually have a pretty good harvest of those pods at about the time that you're ready to start putting in your summer crops. Allow the peas to dry and they can store for many, many months. They're probably also part of your diet already and one of those things that you're familiar with. So you might as well grow those kind of plants. I like eating the pea pods whole in salads, but they're easily sauteed as well. And like many of the crops on this list, peas can be eaten straight from the garden as a fresh harvest, or if you choose the varieties for shelling, you save them to either plant new plants next year or have a nice pea soup in the dead of winter. As you harvest these crops and start making room for your summer survival garden, one of the first plants to consider are potatoes. Potatoes may be just about the most ideal survival crop, packed with nutrients and calories. Pretty easy to grow and they can be grown in most regions of the world. Chances are they're already part of your diet and you know that they can store for a very long period of time. For a really good survival garden, look beyond just the beds that you're growing in and consider growing in containers, grow bags, five gallon buckets. Potatoes are ideal for growing in those type of containers and last year, I had dozens of pounds of potatoes that I harvested from my grow bags. 
Corn is the next plant to make the list for our survival garden crops. And think beyond just the sweet corn that you're probably already growing. Sweet corn varieties may give you one or two ears per plant, and they're great to eat fresh during the summer. Can be frozen pretty well and are part of your diet already. Well, also think about what's known as field corn the type of corn that is intended to dry after harvest so that you can save it over a period of months. It can be used as animal feed. It can be made into a flour, and it can be used in a number of the other stews and soups that you might be using corn in right now. It may take a little bit extra space, but the more corn you can grow, the better it'll be. And like the different types of corn, you should grow the different types of squash in a survival garden. Summer squash and winter squash. It's called winter squash, not because it grows in the winter, but because it stores so well, you'll be using it throughout the winter. And I still have a lot of butternut squash that I harvested last year. The end of winter, with snow on the ground, I can still make a butternut squash soup, which tastes delicious and is a great way to feed me and my family when I can't be growing outside. During the peak of summer, the summer squash is so abundant and grows so quickly that you'll be harvesting plants like zucchini on a daily basis to help fill your dietary needs. As a survival crop, squash is definitely in the top 12. Tomatoes are also an important part of a survival garden. First off, you probably already like tomatoes and are growing them in your garden. They're the most popular crop that we grow. They are so easy to grow and grow in so many different regions that if you choose the right variety, you should have success. And they can be preserved in so many different ways. If you don't know how to can tomatoes, well, you should learn so that you can do something with that abundant crop and be able to eat tomatoes throughout the year. You can also freeze tomatoes. You can dry tomatoes. You could make a sauce with your tomatoes and use that during the winter as well. Tomatoes rank very high in the top 12. Now, granted, they can only be grown during the summer, but like I do, if you devote a large area of your garden to growing tomatoes, you'll be able to fulfill your dietary requirements, even with snow on the ground. Beans are another plant that you'll only be able to grow during the summer, but you can grow a number of different types of beans for different purposes. You can have those beans that you're growing to pick fresh and use fresh, or you can grow the beans that are intended to dry, like pinto beans, and then store for a number of months so that you can continue to use them during the winter when you couldn't normally grow the beans. They're packed with nutrition and calories and can be easily grown. One of the nice things about most of the beans that you'll be growing in your garden, if you choose a vining plant, you can actually grow it right next to a number of the other plants. So like a three sisters garden, grow your beans with your corn, using the corn as a trellis for those beans. They don't take up a lot of space, but you should grow a lot of plants because it may surprise you even with, when the plant is loaded with pods, that it takes quite a few pods to give you the amount of dried beans that you'd want to store. So intersperse the beans throughout your garden and it should give you the supply that you're looking for. Another great survival garden crop are carrots. Now, typically we grow our carrots in a bed in a block, but they too can be interspersed with other plants. In the corners of your bed and along the sides of your bed, 
consider growing carrots just to increase how many you can harvest. They're packed with vitamins. They store well, and you can also preserve them. I like to ferment my carrots as a nice snack throughout the year. If you leave them in the ground because they are a biennial, they'll send up the flowers and seed in the second year so that you can continue the crop. You can also use that as a storage method. You can dig up carrots throughout the winter whenever you can and also in the spring. The texture might be a little bit different if you're eating it raw, but each of those carrots can be cooked or put into a stew or soup and you won't even notice the texture difference. There are a number of other crops that you can consider growing that just didn't make my top 12. A great crop that is packed with nutrition and is a staple in many diets are sweet potatoes. Now, I didn't include sweet potatoes on my list because many varieties can take 120 to 150 days to harvest. And in my Colorado garden and many other northern regions, we just can't be guaranteed that our season will be long enough to harvest the sweet potatoes. And because we're doing this for survival, we really don't want to waste garden space if we're going to have a failure of the crop. So if you can grow sweet potatoes, definitely consider adding them to your list. Even if you're not able to get a complete harvest of the sweet potatoes, you can eat the leaves over the course of the growing season. So they might make your top 12. I'm just limited with the length of my growing season. And if I'm going to grow a crop for the roots, I really want to harvest those roots. Two other crops that didn't make my top 12 are peppers and cucumbers, both plants that I grow regularly and both plants that I will continue to grow. Cucumbers are great to be made into pickles, but they really won't fill a substantial part of most diets. They just don't have the calorie count that I think is important for crops in a survival garden. And peppers are similar. They have a number of vitamins, particularly vitamin C, and they can be added to a lot of dishes. But as a primary crop, as a food source, they just don't rank high enough. I have garlic growing in this bed. And if you have the space, garlic is one of those plants to consider. But its downfall is that it takes about nine months from the time you plant until the time you harvest. And so I haven't been able to use this bed for anything since I put it in the ground and I won't really be able to use it much until I can harvest the garlic. But if all you're eating are those 12 primary crops in a survival garden, you're probably going to get bored with the taste. That's where garlic comes in. It can really make your food taste better, along with a lot of other plants like herbs and even onions. Consider growing those as well, not because they pack the nutrition or because you can repeat grow them throughout the season, but because it adds variety to your diet. You can grow all of those in containers, and that's a great way to expand the crops that you're growing, as I mentioned before with the potatoes. Maybe take the 12 top plants and grow them in your primary beds, and then around the edges, have your containers to grow all of those others that might not be in the top 12, but can still be a good idea to grow when you're providing food for your family because you need to. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>